were utterly worthless. He understood that no one ever wrote without the result being warped by his or her own prejudices and ego. 99% of books sat on shelves and in bookcases and were unread, unnoticed and untouched. For the vast majority of people, books were simply ornaments to a room, advertising their owner's intellectual vanity. One in a million books was ever re-read, and the so-called classics were mostly dipped into and unadmittedly discarded or force-read, not though by academics who canonized these classics and lived like parasites on the obscurity they generated. The masses were as vile in their own way. They read drivel turned out by illiterates. These illiterate authors had allowed themselves to become product. And then there was the worst of all, books that instructed us on how to live. When to turn to such books was a symptom of the disease, not its cure. All texts were without a center of meaning. Their interpretation rested with the reader, not the author. There could be no agreed purpose to a text. All was chaos. The text was an autonomous entity. In short, without the reader, the text did not even exist save as a cipher. The creed, all books are exits from life, all books must be destroyed. The collective was putting tenets into action that few dared even to consider. Unlike the book Burning Nazis or the Censorious Communists, it was not selective. It did not destroy because it thought works corrupt or dangerous. It destroyed works because it believed none had meaning or significance, because words only mean other words, and chase each other in a linguistic game of tag to avoid.